Hello, everyone. Welcome to the market update for Tuesday, January the 19th. Uh, last week in the, the, the update we did on Thursday, uh, the market was looking like it was, it was really uh, close to pulling back. We were starting to see some extreme signals, starting to see some reversal signals. And then uh, today it's just kind of rebound a little bit. And so I want to point that out. Um, and then talk a little bit about uh, uh, some of these, these kind of the categorize these warning signals that I typically look at. Um, you know, the bottom line, you always have to remember, and I always have to constantly remind people I talk to, uh, is that uh, we try our best to try to uh, look at these clues as to what the market is going to do next. Um, there are times where it does exactly what the clues are telling us that it should do, uh, but there are times where it doesn't, and it, it all comes back to we can never know exactly what the market's going to do or uh, exactly what stocks are going to do. Um, but also, I would add that that sometimes the market, um, that some of the the clues we see. Our early signals, or that that uh, the, the 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 results of what we're seeing today can can be seen a little bit further down the road. Um, one example of this is back in February. Uh, I saw a lot of really strong uh, bearish reversal signals uh, that the market was going to pull back and probably pull back significantly. Um, but over the next week, uh, the market still attempted to rally, and it still looked like it was it was wanting the fight to go up. And it was kind of confusing to me because I was I mean some of these clues were just so extreme that that something big was about to happen. And it was about a week, maybe a little over a week after those indicators showed up that we got the big drop and the massive drop that we had, uh, obviously related to uh, COVID and all that stuff, but. The market was signaling that 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 things were out of out of place um, ahead of time, but it took a little bit of time before the 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 actual result of those clues took place. Uh, I've seen it happen where it's been a couple weeks or so um, before the the results of some of those signals have happened. So um, this teaches us an important lesson that. That uh, well, obviously, it humbles us to know that we can't be these market gods that know exactly what the market's going to do. Um, it all, but it also tests our patience as well to 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 learn to recognize when some of these signals are are taking place. Maybe using them to, at the very least, um, prepare ourselves a little bit. Maybe reduce risk. You know, sometimes what's nice about getting some of these early signals is that it gives us time to uh, maybe take some profits, a little bit more profits on the trades that are working out for us, um, have a chance to get to cash, uh, maybe even have a chance to start looking at some bearish trading opportunities that we might want to take advantage of before the actual movement takes place. So we'll see if that's what's happening in this case as we look through uh, some of the the these signals that have, that have kind of reversed a little bit here. We'll start with the direction alerts. Uh, last time we were talking, we, we saw that, uh, you know, momentum was in the extreme range. We had gotten into the extreme range. Now, we did sell off on Friday. So that, obviously, a move like that would alleviate uh, some of those over overbought conditions or extreme conditions. It pushed the momentum indicator all the way back to almost to the hold area where it's on just the, the left side of that uh, that bullish trend bar right there. Um, the breadth indicator came off the extreme range. It's in the high range still, but it, it made a it kind of moved back into the the, the area where it's it's not as worrisome now. Um, same with sentiment. Sentiment was in the extreme, came back into the, just the, the complacency area there. Now, when we look at uh, the uh, buy-sell ratio chart, we're still pretty wide on those. I would, I would still characterize these as still being pretty extreme. 
We are, I guess, with the Friday move, we did see the buys, uh, the, the Friday pullback there, we did see the buys start to come down a little bit there. But these are still a little bit wide uh, in as far as what we'd like to see in a, you know, a, con a condition where the overbought condition has been alleviated. Sentiment, though, the sentiment tab here, or chart here, came back quite a bit. Uh, we we had not only gone up to the extreme range, but exceeded it. And this is one of the, the reasons why I thought that, boy, this usually when this gets up into this area, it usually means a, a, a pullback is imminent. We did get a pullback on Friday, but, um, you know, not one that you would say was any was significant. Um, but it's pushed that sentiment indicator back down a little bit lower here. So this one still has room to run where it could come back up again. So it makes me wonder if if the rebound rally today maybe could try to push to another new all-time high. Uh, it's something I'll be looking for this week and uh, seeing if that ends up taking place. Uh, another thing that uh, uh, that we keep an eye on a lot of times is those uh, – the, the in the in the indexes how many the buy sell ratios are they in the, the extreme range we are seeing a pretty high russell 2000 ratio uh but this is up at nine so this is close to going to double digits um on on uh, thursday and it's since backed off to seven to one um and then you know the s p uh, 500 is just a little under three to one there. So those aren't, aren't too, too bad. Uh, they've kind of all ba backed off a little bit. So we'll see if this means that, that uh, the market is still kind of running a little bit. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that we dismiss those extreme areas that we did reach because, like I said, sometimes that can be just a little bit of an early warning sign. And, and what can happen is that suddenly the market pushes higher right here and we hit these really extreme ranges again, and then we get really close to a, a, a much bigger pullback. I will say that a lot of times that when we, when we start to get extreme ranges that look like a pullback is imminent, and then it backs off, and then it goes extreme again and backs off, and maybe it goes extreme again, usually when the, the correction happens, it's usually a much bigger correction. So uh, the more times it, it kind of shakes off, those it has those mini pullbacks it often leads to a much bigger correction when it finally happens so that's something to keep in mind as well all right so let's look at um, let's look at the individual charts here let's go into the watch list here and, and look at the SPY So we had, you know, the bearish reversal candle on uh, Wednesday. We had, uh, excuse me, on Thursday. We had the drop here on uh, Friday. Uh, and then we've, we're trying to bounce here a little bit. Although the bounce today, and this is one thing to note as well, has been on very, very light volume. I mean, we only have uh, uh, a little less than... than two hours ago before the market closes and uh, that volume is is just anemic it's it's really really low so um, it, it doesn't show a lot of strength um, with that rebound so you have to worry that maybe this is a little bit of a false rally a little bit of a maybe a, a maybe a um, I don't know if it was quite oversold on this drop really but a, a little bit of a bounce from the drop over the last couple of days and well, and that is still possible. That could roll over, and if it does, you might see some heavier selling if that were to take place. Uh, one other thing to note: you don't, you know, we don't have uh, access here on on Traders Pro to look at a weekly bar on the candlesticks. But if you have an, another charting service where you can switch the candles to show weekly candles, meaning each bar or candle represents one week of trading. Uh, one thing that was taking place last week uh, on Friday was that, that um, we were seeing a a um, on on the S and P and on the Dow we were seeing a bearish inside day. Uh, now an inside day, 
see if I can find one here on on a on the chart here that I could show you. They don't happen all that often, so this is probably the closest to it I can see right here. But an inside day is when you have a run up and then you have a, a usually a pretty decent sized bar on the on the on the final push and then the next bar opens inside of that bar of that bullish bar and closes lower for the day but remains inside completely inside that that entire bar right there we call that an inside day and that would be a bearish inside day when you have a run up when the bar be, when you have a run up in the stock the bar at the top is a bullish bar and then the the next bar is a bearish bar but it's it's contained inside that that previous bullish bar uh usually you get some sort of a pullback from that uh like i said this is a very close inside day and and you got a little bit of a pullback out of that and on the weekly chart we were seeing that here so that was implying that there was a pretty good chance that this week we could drop and that's why it was pretty bearish going into this week that um that we would we would move lower now just like with any candlestick formation or any chart formation doesn't mean they always work and it's possible that this that that inside uh, bar on the weekly chart could be kind of shaken off but I've seen it happen before where you get an inside bar on a move, it shakes it off, goes up a little bit further, and then you get the drop afterwards. So it could be one of the, just one of those early morning signs that we're getting that, that maybe we're not at the top, but we're getting very near the top. And uh, that is what we're seeing is a lot of these, these topping um, conditions or behaviors are starting to really show up. So, We'll keep an eye on that. Um, you know, it, it, the so far, well, well, it really, really worried me early was that we we had opened and then uh, after we had opened, we had drifted lower. So we we were almost looking like we were going to be closing lower than where we opened for the day, if that held, and that would have been really bearish if, if that candle formation would have formed. The market has managed to rebound to where we've gone higher than the open. Um, but we'll see if it fades at all. Maybe it fades going into the close. We'll see if that happens and and, um, and see if we see any continued weakness. Um, I think we're going to probably know a little bit more on Thursday in the next update, um, how things are looking. We might have a better outlook as to uh, how things are playing out at that, at that time. The Dow chart's pretty much the same. Although it's actually lower than where it opened, it's still in, in kind of showing weakness there. It's closed lower than where, it's closed. It looks like it might close lower than where it opened. And again, very light volume. Uh, the uh, Nasdaq 100 is looking actually okay uh, near the highs of the day. Uh, seems to be doing fine. And then the Russell 2000, which has been the leadership stock gapped up but it really hasn't gone anywhere and this is one that we're going to probably keep a close eye on because it, because of the fact that this has been the leadership over the last um over the last uh several uh months um uh, we're, we're and it looked like it was starting to break down a little bit on friday too we had finally had the first kind of down day in the in the uh, russell 2000 and again, that was lining up with, with some of these other bearish uh, reversals that we were seeing. So it really looked like this week was going to end up being uh, lower. Um, we'll see how that kind of plays out. We don't have a lot of strong clues. Um, and that's common on a first trading day of the week. But look at the volume there, too, on the Russell. Very, very low today. So there's just really not a lot of participation in what's going on today. And we'll see if that's significant moving forward in the week. Uh, bonds. Uh, one thing I mentioned bonds is we, you know, bonds are are getting a little extreme, uh, extremely oversold. They did reach that extreme oversold range, but since then they bounced a little bit. We're in the sell range though here. Now the trend of bonds is still down. 
we've talked about this a number of times that um, you know it probably needs to get above this previous high to go to a higher high before uh, we'll we'll get a much clearer reversal of bonds. Um, but th with the extreme oversold nature of bonds, they're due for a little bit of a rally. Now, why is could this be a little bit significant? Well. Um, a lot of times, you know, I've talked about this a number of times before, that, that money tends to flow in and out of the markets into bonds, bonds into, mar into the market. Usually it's the big institutional traders that are doing this. Um, a lot of times when they're worried about market conditions or, or things selling off or things are starting to sell off, they'll pull their money out of the market where they get the better return but they'll take it out of the market and go into the safety of bonds where they get the they get the more guaranteed return you know the it'll be a smaller return but it'll be a, a safer return and uh, so that's one thing to look for is if we start to see the market selling off do we start to see bonds uh, start to move up and if that's the case you know that could if we start to see that correlation we haven't always seen that that correlation. Um, it doesn't always happen that way, but if we start to see that correlation take place, uh, that could be a signal that uh, the professionals, at least, are worried about what's going on, and they're they're starting to move money into the safer area of bonds and and um, and try to take advantage of that. So that's something to keep on uh, keep an eye on as well to see if we start to see that surge in bonds. Uh, but so far, the trend is still down. And um, I don't see anything significant right now that's saying that that trend is, is continuing, is, is reversing. Uh, gold continues to move lower. I remember we had this drop last week right here. It looked like it was starting to rally back up. But remember, it was, it was kind of choppy. It was, the volume was pretty low on it. It looked like it was just kind of setting up for another move down. And then Friday we got another move lower there. We tried to rebound a little bit today, uh, but but so far the trend is 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 looking down in the near term. And uh, we didn't quite break that to that higher high up here to really reverse that trend. And um, what's making gold uh, uh, trade maybe a little bit different than it has in the past. You know, this has always been kind of the the inflation haven. When it looks like inflation is is increasing, people flock to bonds, um, and that will still be the case because uh, there's still going to be people that uh, will trust bonds over any other, or, or excuse me, gold. There, there tends to be that that movement to gold when inflation starts to to show up, um, and there's still going to be those traditionalists that will continue to do that. But another asset has is, is starting to become more popular. As many of you know, uh, Bitcoin is 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 starting to to really uh, gain credibility, and a lot of people are using that as a traditional hedge against inflation. Where normally they would have gone to gold, there are a lot of particularly the younger generation is starting to go into Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation, and so that might affect a little bit of how gold trades in that inflation trade. Uh, like I said, it should still move up if inflation really starts getting bad. Um, but the pace in which it moves may may be altered by the fact that it's it may be split between uh, Bitcoin and gold. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. That's something I'm trying to figure out too, to see that, that type of dynamic. Um, I'm pretty new to Bitcoin and trying to understand Bitcoin myself. And how it affects, uh, you know, other traditional moves that are made in the market. But that's something to keep an eye on over the next few years to see if that, uh, how that kind of plays out. Uh, oil has continued to move higher, although it was down a little bit on on Friday. Uh, I'm still waiting for again some of that news of of uh, some of those OPEC companies increasing production that would probably uh, cause the oil to start selling off, but um, can't argue the trend. The trend has still been up, and um, until that breaks, we're going to assume it's going to continue to move up. 
Uh, the dollar is starting to bounce a little bit and starting to rise a little bit. We finally saw the dollar uh, go to a higher high right here on Friday. Um, it's still very close. I don't know if it did. Yeah, it looks like it did break that high from back here. So it does look like it's it's gone to that higher high. Uh, looks like it could be reversing trend. We'll keep an eye on that to see if it, it continues to move higher. Uh, that of course could affect uh, the movements on on commodities as well. They, they tend to have an inverse relationship, not all the time, but uh, some of the time they tend to move inversely. Um, we'll see if that has an effect on that. Yeah, we'll see if it has an effect on the market as well. The the, the, the market has been rallying uh, quite a bit on the falling dollar. Uh, we'll see how it does if the dollar starts to to rise from here, starts taking off from here. And then lastly, the VIX. Um, so as we went into last week with some of those reversal signals that were taking place, we saw the VIX start to rise a little bit too. Um, and and so it looked like the, the VIX was kind of backing up some of those concerns with that reversal. With the rally today, the VIX has come down a little bit, but that is still something to look at to see if, if – um, you know, one thing we I'm kind of curious about is we're seeing kind of a base right here in the VIX where it's not going any lower than this. Um, you know, if if we start to see the market have some sell-offs, do we start to see the VIX start spiking to higher highs? You know, it's just one of those reversal points right here. On the other hand, if we were to break below all the support right here, have a major move down below on the VIX, I think that would be extremely bullish for the market. It would probably shake off any concerns for any um, uh, near-term pullback if that were to happen. But that's something to kind of keep an eye on that it's kind of stalled out right in this area right here. And we'll see how it kind of reacts to that. All right, as far as uh, individual stocks to look at, uh, if we go under sectors here, let's take a look at the retail sector. One that I mentioned before that I still like is this PDD. It's a 95 strength rank, so it's down a little bit on the strength rank scale, but it's um, I like the pattern on it. Let's switch the signals on here. And it had this little pullback right through here. Today it looks like it's started to move up off of those off the low there, so it might be starting to take off right here. Um, this one is very close to going back to a buy signal. So if you remember in the last class, we talked about how you can you can you know, put these into watch lists and keep an eye on them. You can go over here and if you already have your watch list set up. You could go over here and click on this little blue or green plus button, add that to your um, you know, watch list, waiting for it to go back to that buy signal. We just named it watch list there. I think I already have it in there, so I might, I might be doubling it up in there. Uh, but you could do that and. and um, and kind of wait for it there, but I like that pattern. Another one I like under computer and technology. I think we went over this one before too, the OIIM, 97 strength rank right here, OIIM. It's still kind of in this, uh, well, it was in this kind of sideways pattern. Actually, this one we, we pointed out, uh, I think it was just, just the other day because this was a hold signal right here and that's gone right back to buy. We knew it was really close to going back to a buy signal. So this one looks like it could get ready. It might be getting ready to take off again. Another one in computer technology would be this uh, AEYE audio I. It's a 96 strength rank. A E Y E. Very similar, where you have, you know, you have the, the sharp burst right here, and then it's kind of drifting a little bit. This is 
this is what we call a flag or a pennant type pattern um, where it looks like a flag on a flag post there and you're, you're waiting for it to go back to that buy signal break out of that that flag range there And this one's getting pretty close to getting back to a buy signal. It's kind of in the middle of the hold range right there. And then one last one on industrial products. This BWEN uh, has a 97 strength rank here, Broadwind Energy. A nice little run up right here. It's just kind of pulled back. Again, notice how kind of the choppy nature of the pullback. It's not a sh straight move down. It's kind of back and forth a little bit. So that's a good kind of corrective type behavior. And this one's really close to going back to a buy signal. Any sort of an up day would, would probably put that, another up day would probably put that back to a buy signal there. All right, that does it for the main update. Just, uh, I just have a real quick uh, training today. Um, I was going to plan a, a little bit bigger training, but uh, the holiday yesterday kind of threw me off, as it always does. Those holidays always mess me up a little bit. And probably many of you, it's the same way, where today feels like a Monday. <laughs> Yesterday actually felt like a Saturday to me for some reason, but uh, today felt like a Monday and um, almost forgot that I had my update today because it is Tuesday. And so um, what I wanted to do is, as far as the training, it's just a, a real brief training, but I think an important training to kind of put together um, – maybe a list of things that when we talk about warning signs, when we talk about trying to find multiple warning signs, you know, what does that mean? What are some of the main ones that I look at? Now I've said, I usually say this a number of times when I'm doing the updates, but maybe it's a chance where you maybe can write them out to where you, you can have a list that you can kind of follow. Um, I, I think it's to, to begin with, I think it's really important that you don't, focus on one thing, uh, one warning sign or, or one indicator. Um, I learned this early on in my trading career. You know, sometimes when you learn about a new indicator uh, or learn about a new pattern or something, uh, you get excited about it. And usually the excitement is rooted in the belief that you've just found something that's going to tell you what's going to happen next. And, you know, you're, you're constantly looking for that crystal ball. Um, you want to be right all the time. It's human nature. And so, you know, you learn that one new thing, and, uh, and as soon as you find it, you get really excited because you think, this is it. This is what's going to solve all my problems. I'm never going to be wrong again. You risk too much in a trade uh, based off of that indicator, and then it doesn't end up working. You get burned, and then you, you really get frustrated. You, you know, you, and then you and then you discount the indicator. You think, oh, well, that doesn't work. I got to go find something else. Well, after a while, and I, what I'm hoping to do here is speed up the learning curve for you and avoid you a lot of pain and, and frustration. Is that uh, there isn't one thing, and you shouldn't be looking for just one thing. You want to learn about a number of different things that can that can warn you of, of uh, conditions that you need to be aware of. And the more of them that you start lining up the more it increases the probability. But the key word there is the probability. There's still going to be a chance that it may not work out. Um, but at least by understanding how strong the probabilities are, it can allow you to make decisions that you might need to make, whether you, you want to become more aggressive, or you want to become less aggressive, whether you want to tighten your stops or take profits off the table. Um, or add more positions or whatever. These, these all can help you make important decisions that you have to make to manage a portfolio. 
But you'll notice that a lot of what um, we do in looking for these clues follows the general outline of these market updates. Uh, using the software, you want to start off with the the uh, direction alerts. Go into that market trend tab up here at the top. Go into those direction alerts. Um, find out what type of longer term market condition you're in. Um, right now, and for the longest time, we've been in a bull market. We did go into a bear market with that sell off back in earlier in the year. Um, We'll talk more about those types of conditions and strategies when we, when we get to a bear market. But right now we're in a bull market, so the, the trend is, the longer term trend is up. And um, and so when you're in that type of condition, the majority of your tra trade should be to the upside. You know, you don't want to be uh, trying to heavily short everything in, in sight when you're in a bull market. I'm not saying you can't still make money shorting stocks in a, in, a, in a bull market. I've done it before. Um, but you're swimming against the current. Your your chances of success are, are drastically reduced when you're going against the, the larger trend there. So it's important to kind of know what your larger trend is. And the, the opposite is true, too. When you're in a bear market, um, you don't want to be buying, uh, you know, heavily in a bear market. Um, um, you want to be cautiously buying, but you don't want to be just going all out buying uh, every time the market drops, assuming it's going to go right back up because you're you're going against the, the current trend there. Um, you might want to learn how to short stocks in that situation, or you want to buy strategically. You don't want to be um, going all in on, on some of the buys that you're making. So know the, the longer term trend that you're in. But these shorter term signals can be very helpful as well. Uh, most of the time, you're going to be right here in the middle. And when you're right here in the middle, you're you're just going to really focus on what the current what the current trend is. Is the current trend up? The current trend down? Uh, you're not going to be overly concerned. Um, although I will say that for a bullish trend. You'd want to stay in this side of the of the boxes here. You start to get in the sell side right here. Um, you you probably don't want to be looking to buy a lot of stuff. You want to be a little bit more a lot more defensive in that type of situation right there. Actually, let me change that. I would say these two boxes right here. When you start to get into the extreme range right here, this is when you want to pay attention, but you don't want to necessarily panic. As, as many of you know, we've been in the extreme range a few times, um, and it doesn't always mean that the market sells off in a huge way just because it gets in that extreme range. It just tells you that there's a bearish risk as you get into that extreme range. If you get to the far right side of the extreme range, though, that's when you really want to pay attention. And now, although it can stay sometimes in that extreme far side of the extreme range for a little while, it usually doesn't stay there very long. So this is what I'm saying. Sometimes you could get into that extreme range and it could be another week or so before you start to see the the impact of that that uh, indicator. And this is what was happening back in, in, in February last year as we were at the far right side of the extreme range. We had stayed there for the whole week. And then we start to see the sell-off after that. Um, now, would I just start shorting a stock just because I had an extreme range on the momentum indicator? Uh, no, I mean, you could, could you? Yeah, you could. Um, but why not spend a little bit more time to see if there's more clues out there? See if there, you're. It's like building a case for a, a, you know, for a conviction. You know, you have one, one bit of evidence. Could you convict on that one bit of evidence? Well, probably, or maybe in some cases, but the chances of your whole case relying on one bit of evidence could fall apart if for some reason that evidence could be uh, discredited or disproved. Now your whole case is gone, you know, but if you've got multiple bits of evidence, it's much, much harder to um, uh, to to uh, uh, 
uh, ruin the case that you have. Uh, then you move on to the breadth indicator. A lot of times when you're really th when things are really lining up, you're going to get all of these moving into that extreme range. You'll see the extreme uh, breadth that'll be either close to or very near the far right side of that extreme range. Sentiment. Now, sentiment a lot of times tends to lag a little bit. I don't always, very rarely you're going to get those first two at the far right side and sentiment at the far right side. But any, anytime sentiment gets into the extreme range, uh, it, it, it tells you that the market is starting to get complacent. Now, what does it complacent mean? It means usually that the crowd mentality is is such that it it feels it starts to get extremely bullish, and this is where you have to learn to think like a contrarian because we you know we're all we all like to seek approval. Uh, I mean, if you've ever been in a group um, setting, you want to be part of that group. Uh, and uh, even if, if the group is talking about something you might modestly disagree with, uh, sometimes there's that tendency to just kind of want to go along and either not say anything or just uh, or, or even just agree with what's going on because you want to be part of the group. Your 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 desire to be part of the group is, is sometimes greater than than uh, your opinion sometimes. Um, it's just human nature, and there's I don't want to get into the details, but there's studies and studies and studies about uh, group uh, behaviors. Um, well, we saw an example of it a little over a week ago where, with a demonstration in Washington that uh, there were a lot of people there that that, that probably weren't criminals and probably weren't uh, anarchists or, uh, you know, but but they got caught up in the group and they did things that, that they, they, they probably regretted later. Uh, just because they got caught up in that whole group uh, mentality. And uh, we know how strong that that can be. What's difficult is about, under, well, what can be a problem with with group behaviors is that uh, very often they can be wrong when they get to these extreme levels. When the market gets extremely bullish, and I talked about this last week, the phrase I use a lot is when it feels safe to get in, it usually isn't. And uh, when everything feels like it's going to go up, and everyone you're talking to says it's it, the market's going up, and they they believe it's going up, and they're buying stuff left and right, you think, oh, well, if they're buying it, then I should be buying it. If they're confident, then they must know something I don't know, and so I'm just going to go along and buy as well. You get that um, kind of that herd mentality where everybody just uh, is is too far to one side. And that usually is a signal that you're you're either at or very near a top. And so when you start to get this into the extreme range and, and all the other indicators are in those extreme ranges, it's, it's really flashing warning signs that uh, that a pullback should be coming. Uh, you know, we talk about the, the uh, buy-sell ratios when a majority of the stocks are, are – are moving into the buy category, not as many sales. You know how many? How many? It, it, it takes new buyers to come in and push things higher. And if, if most of the people are already in stocks, and that's what's showing up here, is that when you have really high, uh, when almost every stock has a buy, it means that that uh, the majority of people are already in those stocks. There's not going to be a lot of new money being able to come in and, and push those stocks higher. You know, we look at the sentiment uh, indicator here, and this again goes back to what I was talking about with that, uh, you know, that that mentality that uh, you start to get in these extreme areas here that uh, you know where where people are convinced that, that things are going to go higher and and, uh, and they're guaranteed to go higher. You want to be, you know, looking to do the opposite. And that's what I like about these indicators; they help us kind of cut through the emotion. You know, um, you know, I don't, I don't have to, you know, if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to go against the crowd while I'm in the crowd and hearing everybody talk about how how great the market is and how far it's going to go up, it's hard for me to to think opposite of that. But if I can go to an indicator that's showing me that 
hey, this is getting a little stretched here. That sentiment's getting a little stretched. It, it's easier for me to to uh, recognize that warning signal and recognize when a turn uh, might be about to happen. Um, but we also got to recognize too when some of these things back off. You get those extremes and they back off again. You know, I one of the things I've been uh, that I've tried to point out in today's update is is that. Uh, you know, last week I was pretty convinced that uh, that that, that we we're going to get. I was pretty convinced we we're going to get pulled back this week, and we still might. We're early in the week, but I also can't get so focused on that to where when the indicators start shifting here, when we start moving off those extreme ranges, that I blindly stick to my observation from last week and say and ignore that it's backed off a little bit and say oh no I'll forget this it's still going to drop it's still going to it's still going to crash next week you know we want to be fluid we want to be able to say okay what the indicators are saying hey it, it wasn't as bad as it seemed at the end of last week maybe maybe the market has a little bit more room to run here maybe it's going to it's it, it's maybe this is an early warning sign and um, and that maybe we do run for another week or two before maybe we get back into these extreme ranges again. If you go into the the uh, not the buy sell ratio, you go into the indexes here. Another clue again that, that, that a warning sign that you can look for, and I mentioned this last week as well, is do you start to see these ratios, these buy sell ratios, on the indexes start to get really high? I talked about the small cap six S and P small cap 600 double digit. You get into double digit uh, ratios, that's pretty extreme. That means that that there are 11 more buys. Uh, there are 11 buys for every one sell. And so it's just it's getting a little top heavy there. There's 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 getting to be fewer and fewer. There's 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 getting to be fewer fewer and fewer money that's being able to go into to buying stocks when when so many of them are already up. And it takes remember it takes more buying just to keep them up, just to maintain them up. If if everyone stops buying for a day, guess what? It doesn't just stay there. It drops because it takes buying to hold things up. Now some of these have backed off a little bit. Like I said, the S and P 500. Um, I think that was closer to four to one, if I'm not mistaken. It, it's back a little bit under three to one here. But you want to keep an eye on those. Do those start to spike up and 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 get into those double digits or very close to those double digits? I mean the the Russell was the Russell 2000 was at like uh, nine to one when we last checked it. So it was very close to get to that double digit uh, ratio there when i start to get onto individual charts then i you know you we start looking at the s&p 500 chart itself you know you look to see okay we're in this extreme condition do I start to see it on the chart where a reversal takes place? And, you know, when we had that bearish reversal on Thursday where it tried to open higher, ended up closing lower, that was a bearish reversal day. Um, well, you line that bearish reversal day up, not, you know, it's not just that there's a bearish reversal day, but then you add that to the extreme conditions, the other extreme conditions there. Obviously, the probabilities are much higher that Friday, we were going to get a little bit of a drop, and we did. We got a we got a drop there on Friday, although it didn't, you know, it didn't really have much follow through from today. But it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't shocking that we were down on Friday, you know, based on all that we were looking at last Thursday. Now those reversals could be um, just just like that, a, a you know, just a down candle after having several up days um, it could be 
remember that price formation that I call a black candle? Um, you know, I know a stock that has a really good example of this was uh, Tilray, T-L-R-Y. I actually traded this one. where you have this huge run up. It was an extreme reversal risk all the way to the right side. And then you had a day on Friday where it opened up here, it gapped up, but it couldn't hold that. It ended up selling off and closing lower than the open, but still higher than where it closed the day before. Now, the reason why I call these Black candles is if you look on other some other charting services they'll 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 show them as a as a black uh candlestick it'll you know stockcharts.com dot com is one that I mentioned you could look at that it'll show it as a black candle that's usually a pretty strong reversal signal doesn't work all the time but a majority of the time it does um, so it wasn't shocking to me that Tilray opened lower the next day but if you were to have market conditions that were extreme and you had, let's say, the, the S&P 500 that was at the far right side of that, and that particular day, had a, after having a run-up that had a, a gap up and then it closed lower than where it opened, again, there's a you, the warning sign is there that this, this is going to pull back. Now, these candlestick formations are very short-term, I meaning they, they can only... All this was telling me is there's a good chance that today this thing was going to open lower. Doesn't mean that this is going to come all the way back down. Um, but when you combine the, the candlestick formation with all the other clues that, that were were there, you could you could uh, expect that you know to alleviate that extreme overbought condition of the overall market that you probably do for a pullback. And, and by the way, the pullback I was expecting when I and I talked about this last week on the S and P 500 when all these clues started to show up, and I st I still feel this way if we do end up um, uh, uh, getting a, a drop still is is pullbacks like what happened in, in September and in the end of October right here. Not huge pullbacks, but enough to kind of you know, alleviate the overbought condition. But even then, you, you see what happened here. You had a couple days where you dropped. You had an update right here. It looked like maybe things were over. And you actually moved sideways for a few days, but then you ended up dropping lower right there. So, you know, could it be that, uh, could it be still that, could this be the start of something? And then this is a, uh, a little bit of a pause and, and then it sets up for something lower. Yeah, that's still something to, to keep an eye on. And that's what I'm worried about a little bit with the volume today. Really light volume is that it's bouncing a little bit on, on light volume. It could just be a bounce for still another move lower. Like I said, we'll know more about what conditions you know we're dealing with here probably by Thursday when we have the next update. Uh, you could have an inside trading day. I talked about the, the inside day on the weekly chart. I talked about this inside, a little bit of an inside day right here, very close to not being one, but it was an inside day right here that led to a little bit of a pullback right there. You start to see the price action turning, turning more bearish. Another thing you could look at that I've mentioned is you could look at the uh, the bond market as well. Do you start to see, usually you'll notice this though when the market actually starts to sell off, but you can go to the TLT and do you see it start to rise if the market starts selling off? That could be an indication that uh, that the professionals are moving money out of the market and into bonds. They don't want to just have it sit there in cash. They still want to get a return, but they're willing to take a smaller return to have the safety of not being in the market. Now, the reason why this could be significant in looking at, at the bond market is because if if it's just a short-term pullback, if today's just a short-term pullback, you're not going to see massive amounts of money going into bonds if it's going to go right back into the market again. You know, uh, you don't see professional traders make knee-jerk 
uh, trades very often where they're just flip flopping back and forth, you know. Um, but if you see a, a, a pretty decent down day in the market and you see a big spike in bonds where the bond market really take, makes a big move up, a lot of times that's a, a little bit of a warning sign that uh, that those professional traders are are believing that um, uh, that uh, that it could be more than just just a, a a minor little pullback that they're 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 feeling like they need to get some money into safety and get it there pretty quickly, and that goes with the VIX as well. You know, we look at the VIX. Um, I did a training on the VIX a little while ago. If you want to look at that, but um, you know, when the VIX uh, the VIX starts spiking up. You know, it's telling you that those professional traders are hedging. That they're they they're buying those protective puts, which is driving up the, the price of those those puts, and uh, causing that VIX to spike up a little bit. And that can be a little bit of a warning sign that uh, that, that uh, things are getting serious. So, as you can tell, all these things that that you know, I I wish there was just one button we could push and one button we could look at. Um, and this isn't a, a, a real crystal clear mathematical calculation that, that, that a lot of you like to, to use and, and rely on. This is a little bit more of an art, not a science, when you're looking at all these different things. But if you can kind of get yourself in a habit of constantly kind of checking these symptoms, um, a lot of times you can tell when you're getting in conditions that you need to start paying attention to. Now, the majority of the time, these things aren't going to tell you much of anything. In fact, uh, sometimes some of these, these market updates are kind of boring because I'll just quickly go through and say, well, you know, the sentiment indicator is not really telling us a whole lot. It's, and when it's not telling us a whole lot, it usually means that the current trend we're in is likely just to keep continuing. Um, but it's when we start to reach extremes that we have to start to pay attention and, um, and we have to kind of and, and the tough part is is when you have positions because when you have trades in place it it forces a bias on you if i have all stocks that i bought i'm 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 buying stocks so i'm long the market and i start seeing bearish clues start showing up it's very easy to, to rationalize away those bearish clues. It's easy for me to say, well, last time that showed up, it didn't work out, so I'm not going to worry about it this time. Or, you know, I never really believed in that indicator anyway, so I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. Or I heard this article by this, this guy that works from Goldman Sachs. I have no idea who he is, but he's really bullish for the next six months, so I'm going to listen to him. It's really easy to to um, to hold on to the bias you have because because the alternative is pain. The alternative is if if you're wrong and the market drops, you're going to have the pain of losing money. And so you'll have a tendency to seek out only those things that confirm um, what your your current direction is or your current bias is. And that's why it's it's critical to to look at indicators that are 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 not biased they're not they're they're not trying to to they're not they're 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 trying to warn you of of things that are happening that you might not be aware of and it's important to develop the discipline to follow what those are saying and sometimes it just means not to overreact or sometimes it means just to Tighten up stops, reduce some of your risk exposure, um, and sometimes it it it's not going to end up happening, and and you're going to have an opportunity cost. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna tighten up stops. You're gonna get out of trades. You're gonna go to cash, and then the market's going to rebound and go up again, and you're going to miss out on that extra move. And, it, and it's it's real easy to be frustrated when that happens. Um, but you remember, this is a long game that you're in, and um, the majority of the time, these these indicators are, are going to work for you. 
and they're they're going to save you a lot more money uh, then they're going to hurt you in, in making less money uh, by ignoring them. So um, it's important that you kind of develop a routine that you constantly monitor these things and, and, uh, and make sure you, you uh, establish plans to react to what they are telling you. All right, hopefully that's helpful. I know it wasn't the you know, most biggest earth-shattering training for today, but... Um, these are things that I do all the time, and uh, they help me all the time in in uh, managing my emotions and managing, you know, how aggressive I get or how less aggressive I get. And uh, they they've worked very well for me in my training career, and so I'm hoping to pass that that knowledge on to you guys as well. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you on Thursday for the stock specific class. Bye now.